This video will cover Reverse Osmosis 101 basics on properly designing and setting up a PureClean RO system. Water connections, electrical connections, and the basic setup will be presented to allow you to better understand the operation of a PureClean RO system. It is highly recommended to perform a comprehensive water analysis prior to installing an RO system. Hard water, high TDS, iron, orthophosphate, chlorine, and possibly other contaminants can impact the production quality and performance of the RO system. Based on the design of the proprietary technology of the onboard stabilizer bar, our system is able to run without a water softener and can handle up to 20 grains of hardness. If the water is harder than 20 grains, a water softener will be required. If orthophosphate, alum, iron, or other similar contaminants are present, they can clog the membrane up very quickly and reduce the production quantity and or quality of the RO water. These issues can be addressed by using an anti scanlet kit or other similar methods. The RO system's carbon tank is sized to handle one part per million of chlorine in the fresh water and should be serviced in an ongoing maintenance program. If your site has more than one part per million, a larger carbon tank will need to be added to prevent damage to the RO membranes. If you have more questions about water quality, please contact New Wave Industries for further support. PureClean manufactures a wide variety of RO systems. All of our systems are based on gallons produced in a day, or GPD. 1,000 through 4,500 gallon per day systems can be wall or stand mounted. While the bigger RO systems, 6,000 and up, are stand mounted only. Looking at the chart, there are many different variations of space required depending on the size of the RO unit. A 3,000 gallon per day wall mount system requires about 79 inches high by 50 inches wide by 11 inches deep compared to the 8,000 stand mount, which requires about 96 inches high, 36 inches wide, and 24 inches deep. Please ensure that you leave enough room around the equipment to allow technicians clearance to service the machine. All RO systems require a minimum amount of fresh water to be supplied to the machine. Using this chart, you can see that 1,000 through 4,500 gallon per day systems require a 1 inch line with 30 psi and 20 gallons per minute. The 6,000 through 10,000 gallon per day systems require a 1 inch line with 40 psi and 30 gallons per minute. For the 15,000 and 20,000 gallon per day systems, a inch and a half line with 40 psi and 40 gallons per minute is the minimum requirement. For larger RO systems, please consult with New Wave Industries for proper sizing and requirements. First, a fresh water line is hooked up to the inlet side of the carbon tank. Out of the carbon tank, we feed the inlet solenoid. From there, we bring a hose to the inlet side of the pre-filter. After the pre-filter and stabilizer bar, another line feeds up to the pressure pump. A line from the reject solenoid should be plumbed to either your sewer connection, a reject recapture tank, or if you have them, your reclaim storage tanks. A hose from the carbon tank reject port should be plumbed to a sewer connection. An overflow on the RO storage tank is recommended. This should be placed higher than the float in the tank, so the RO system shuts off when the tank is full. One last connection would be the product water hose that is connected to your spot-free storage tank. For stand-mounted systems, the city water, reject water, product water, and carbon tank reject hoses are the only connections needed. There are a few options or choices you have when deciding what power you will use for the RO system. For 1,000 through 10,000 gallon per day systems, the power required can either be single phase 220 volt or three phase power, either 230 volt or 460. For 15,000 gallon per day and larger systems, 
there is no single phase power option and are only powered with three phase power, either 230 volt or 460. Other power requirements can be met for international locations such as 380 volt 50 hertz or 575 volt 60 hertz. The RO system is pre-wired and is pretty close to a plug-and-play design. All of the systems should have a dedicated circuit or breaker to supply power to the RO system. If the system is powered with single phase 220 volt, the system is supplied with a locking receptacle plug. If the system is powered with three phase power, the system is to be hardwired. A high level float will also need to be installed on the storage tank. The float simply plugs into the bottom of the RO control box. The fresh water begins flowing through the carbon tank first. The water flows into the carbon tank head and through the carbon media to the bottom of the tank. The carbon media extracts chlorine, which would damage the RO membrane. Once the chlorine is removed, the water flows back up through a stem in the middle of the carbon tank and out of the head. From there, we feed over to the inlet solenoid and into the pre-filter housing. The pre-filter housing contains a standard 5 micron cartridge filter. This will remove any particulates larger than 5 microns, which will help prevent the RO membrane from clogging instantly. The water then passes over to the water stabilizer bar. This bar eliminates the need for a water softener on our RO systems. Hard water is mostly comprised of calcium and magnesium. When those molecules pass by the stabilizer bar, a catalytic effect happens which causes the calcium and magnesium molecules to start to clump together and form big groups instead of staying as singular particles. With this process, the water is able to travel through the membrane and the big groups of calcium and magnesium are too large to stick to the membrane, which are passed as reject water. The water is pressurized through a booster pump and feeds into the inlet side of the membrane. The spiral wound membrane filters out the remainder of the particulates in the water. The permeate, or spot free, is allowed to pass through the very small holes and wrap sections, which only allow water molecules through. The particulates, or dirty water, is passed through the membrane around the sides as concentrate. This water returns to the reject solenoid, which is dispersed into two directions. Some of the reject water passes through the recirculation valve back into the inlet solenoid and is tried again for product water. The remainder flows through the reject flow control valve to regulate how much water the system is rejecting. Eventually that water either goes to a sewer connection, reject recapture tank, or reclaim tanks. The permeate or spot free water leaves through the center of the membrane to the product flow meter, and finally into the spot-free storage tank. You can use your RO water for not only the final rinse, but also chemical mixing and window rinsing. Using RO water for your chemicals will greatly reduce the amount of chemical needed to properly clean the car. The harder the water, the more chemical you will need to use in order to get the foamy cleaning action. If you have a car wash building with windows, utilizing the RO water with one of our window rinse systems will keep the windows clear and clean. Any chemicals or dirty water that gets onto the windows can easily be rinsed with the RO water. If you do not have a reclaim system on site, you can always recapture the reject water and reuse it in the wash you will need an additional tank that is at least the same size as the RO product water tank or bigger. 
An additional pump will also be needed to deliver the RO reject water out to the wash. Using the reject water for a hard water rinse before you apply your final rinses and waxes is an excellent choice. You can also use the water for any applications you would use reclaim water on, such as undercarriages, wraps, mitters, and high pressure blasting. When sizing an RO system, there are a few factors needed. Number of cars washed in a day, how many gallons of spot-free water will be used per car, the number of hours you are open for business, and how many gallons of storage you have. Simply multiply the cars per day and gallons of spot-free water used per car. Then subtract that from the storage gallons times 0.8. Now to find out the size of RO unit I would need, take your gallons required per day, divided by your hours of operation. This gives you A. Now multiply A times 24 times 77 divided by the water temp minus the storage gallons multiplied by 0.8. This formula will give you the size of RO unit you would require at your site. All RO systems have specific settings for each size of unit. More importantly, the reject flow rate. When adjusting your RO system, refer to this chart to adjust the correct settings to the size of unit you have. More explanation of setting your RO can be seen on our other videos. Once a month, the pre-filter will need to be changed. Also, the stabilizer bar will need to be cleaned with a wire brush or preferably with muriatic acid. Checking your TDS levels and operations are a good idea for a daily to weekly schedule. And don't forget that once a year, your carbon media will need to be changed to prevent damage to the RO membranes. Do not mount or place the standard RO systems in the wash bay. PureClean manufactures specific units, our Extreme series, that are purposely built for in-bay applications. These extreme units are available in 1,000 through 4,500 gallon per day systems and are only wall mounted. Do not place the RO storage tank near sunlight. This will create issues with bacterial growth. Purchase a UV rated or dark walled such as a black tank instead of a standard white tank. The Pure Clean reverse osmosis system requires the attention of the site work contractors electricians, plumber, and general contractor. New Wave Industries is willing to assist in any way possible, but the installation team of contractors is key to getting the plumbing and electrical work done correctly. Hopefully this video has helped illustrate the requirements of a PureClean reverse osmosis system.